Welcome back, everybody. It is Rudy with Alpha Investments, and we have a triple collection week here. Um, still behind, trying to got a bazillion of these filmings to do, and we're spacing them out. So today we've got three more reserve list collections that we have purchased. The deals have been done. I think some of the dates of this was uh, July and I think early August. So some of these are probably from two weeks ago. Some are probably two months ago. So we're going to start with the simple thing first, the most interesting and the fun one to discuss. And that is this collection that has the old smoke smell to it. So there's been some discussion in the past about the ozone enzyme stuff when you deal with cards that have the, uh, uh, you can smell the smoker scent to it. So, um, again, I know there's been, a, the first question is, Rudy, even if the card's in mint condition, if it has a strong odor, is it classified as mint? No, it would be like a light plate condition. Historically, a strong odor, especially with smoking related, will usually yellow the sides of cards. You can see some of the ones that were on the outside of the package versus the inside ones not as affected. You can tell the difference which one had that air exposure to the cards. So, you can remove the scent. Um, most of these cards, you really can't smell anything of them anymore. They're fine. But when I received them, they were pretty brutal. Um, like I said, there's a couple different methods. You can Google different methods. Some people use dryer sheets. I've tried that method. It works. I'll quite frankly, just lay the cards out on a clean surface, lay out a bunch of dryer sheets or seal them up in a Ziploc bag. Some people kind of wipe them down very gently without water. Everybody has different processes. All of them work relatively the same. So we're going to talk about what's going on here. Legends cards. And infamous, the four black infamous legends. You got a... Uh, Nether Void, Abyss, Chains, and All Hallows Eve continue to be very, very hot commodities. You can never have enough of them because they are very iconic. Love them. Got nothing to say about them. Prices are continuing to level off recently. I think that's kind of a good thing. We had such an uptick. I think it's time for us to kind of cool off for 12 to 24 months. I think that would be healthy. I honestly wouldn't even be upset if after these, I bought these in the last two months, that in the next couple months we actually have a retrace downwards of even 10, 20%. That would actually not make me unhappy either. All right, next we got the infamous Winter Factory. I know we've talked about the Winter Factory so many times. If you ever come across Winter Factories, it is money in the bank. Some people love gold, silver, Bitcoin, Rudy coin, dog coin, kitty cat, meow coin. I love for Mishra coin. This is where it's at, everybody. You've got, again, you've got two different seasons. I think this is like the most common. It's like autumn or spring or something. And of course, winter being the highly sought after. Again, strip mine. Be very careful buying these. Make sure you verify which version of strip mine you're buying. When you're dealing with the Antiquities original black bordered English versions. Um, I believe, I don't remember which one, if it's the Tower one, the No Horizon. I don't remember which version, but there's one version now that's really going up in value. So just a heads up. Alright, the main reason I bought this whole thing. Stone Calendar. Going to, I think this is the new Black Lotus, everybody. Um, I've done my research. I, I bought some uh, plea, uh, free new two-player starter kits at my local Walmart. And I, I figured out, I think this is the, the future of Magic right there. All right, land tax. A lot of people always said this was never going to be worth anything because it was reprinted in 4th edition, white-bordered. You know, it's not reserved list, blah, blah, blah. They even have new versions, judge promos, foil versions. Completely disagree with everybody because that's how I feel because, you know, Rudy makes everything up anyways. And I still stand by fantastic original art, black border. is always going to be premium. It's going to continue to go up even though it's not reserved list. It's still good. Random Sanctuary. All right, basic lands. You guys have heard me talk about these basic lands. I'm telling you, I'm telling you again and again. Basic alpha beta black border lands. Even played and damaged ones like that particular one. They are going to be higher. Everybody wants to sit down and play a game of Magic. And their basic lands to be alpha beta. It's nostalgic. The artwork is irreplaceable. They're recognizable everywhere in the industry. Whether you play Papa... Or you play, you know, you could play Two-Headed Giant, the hottest, you know, magic format in the industry. Whatever you're playing, you know, Alpha Beta lands where it's at. Unlimited, again, continuing to be the hot thing since Alpha Beta is becoming impossible to get and priced out of realistic terms. Unlimited and Collector's Edition Revised are becoming the new hot thing. These are unlimited. Again, you can tell by the darker colors. I love, don't you guys love that about the hippie? Don't you love the streaked black-gray line that goes down from the mana symbol? I don't know what it is. The Alpha Beta is even more pronounced but oh I, I don't know what it is it's like they drag the pen uh revised cards with a nice damaged uh bent their lord of atlantis again very very cheap card still except tutor tutor lately has been on the move um it's amazing larry nevin's disc is still really cheap same thing with lord sedge and the old jay monday 
you know, it's amazing those particular cards are still pretty cheap. I think they should all be relatively similar to Tudor, but I, and, and Tudor's uncommon, everybody. Soul Ring and Tudor have just been on the move. It's old, it's iconic, it was the last printing of a white border being revised, they were not in fourth. Soul Rings that are five bucks still, ten bucks, still a stupidly good buy. If you ever see them in your store, and they're five, ten dollars, you need to buy them, period. Tudors, same thing. Twenty, thirty dollar range, buy them, buy them again, throw it out your back window, go back to the store and buy another one. Again, they're going to be hundred dollar cards. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, just sell them to me if you're scared. All right, Brain Geyser, same thing. Same thing with the old Chivon, Chevin, Chivon, Chivon. The, the infamous, most iconic original artwork dragon of history. Not much to say. Same thing with these Lord of Atlantises. Copy artifact, again, cards that were not reprinted in 4th edition. I'm telling everybody. These type of cards are more iconic than you think. These are going to be $50 to $100 cards, I'm telling you. Same thing with... I know Mana Vault is a very arguable card because they're like, well, Rudy... You know, reprinted in the ABU, revised, even in 4th edition, 5th edition. You know, you got Masterpiece, Lottery versions, Promo versions. I get it. I get it. I understand. But people don't care. They want special versions. They want certain artwork. They want the 93, 94. Trust me, it doesn't make a difference to these people. It doesn't matter if it's real, fake, counterfeit. People want originals. Land tax. Again, I talked to you guys a minute ago. Uh, Legends, originals, where it's at. Enchantress, people want the artwork. Now you get to the last little bit here of this collection. This is a small collection. You've got the Sagas, the Tempest, the Wastelands. You've got some newer stuff. You've got Gloomer Voids. You know, by the time you watch this, this will be sold. Fetchland, don't care. They'll probably be sold by the time you watch it. And Snaring Bridge, even though it's been reprinted, people want originals. It holds value, even not reserve lists. Um, Onslaught Foils, not really a big fan. I know they're very pricey. They're very, I hate dealing with these old foils. They're very sensitive with fogging and chipping, and it's very difficult to keep them in mint condition. Same, you got a DCI promo cap size, same thing. And a bunch of random, looks like Odyssey cards. You got some Altar and Tens. Humility from Tempest, same thing. These are these Tempest rares, $100 plus. They're stupidly cheap. Lord of Leaves, same thing. All of these Tempest things. Scroll Rack is amazing. It's not over 100 Same thing. Captain Rudy, you know, not quite, I'm, you know, she's better looking than me. But again, artwork alone, they won't print it like that. They won't print pirates like that. That alone has value, period. Citadel Druid, got a billion of them. They're not even rare, but it's antiquities. Palinkron. This card, again, if it's foil, you're rich. Congratulations. Replenish, same thing. If it's foil, you're rich. Um, Ultra Bone, Ice Age cards, use caution. I don't care what anyone says. I know Ice Age is a hot thing. Use caution, everybody. These Ice Age cards, there's so many out there. Be very careful putting money into those. Tutors on Mirage, eh, they're uncommon. They're not rare. Be careful. Same thing, Natural Order, Intruder Alarm, these are Stronghold cards. Retribution, now these Vision cards, well, we'll take a second on these, these last few Visions cards. You know, for the longest time, Visions, Weatherlight, Mirage, these were not, they had no value, and the market's finally realizing the unique abilities and unique mechanics of some of these cards. I expect them to continue to go up. And that's really about it for this, some miscellaneous cheap stuff in the back here. Eh, Gil Drake, a little Saga card. That's it from that collection. Nothing crazy, but I wanted to go through how I, a lot of people like to hear my perspective on how I look at these cards, what I kind of look for, what my thought process is when I look at each one on kind of, oh, good, bad, oh, better flip it, better keep it. Or, of course, other people are going to be like, all right, let me sum it up. Keep the reserve list, dump the rest. Hashtag Rudy. And that's fine. But uh, this is another little one here. Uh, this is an interesting little collection because in the back here you have non-magic cards. kind of thought it was interesting. This is simple. It's a 30-second collection. You got some pretty much some factories, a ton of power leeches again, and what else we got? We got some Urza's miscellaneous, what is it, the miters, mitters? And then you've got all mines, just Tron land city. Mines, power plants, towers, all pretty much played. Tons and tons. These things, I'm telling you right now, they're not expensive, but I, I can easily see in three to five years from now, these are going to be $20, $30, $40, $50 a card. There's going to be a day when these things are going to be really expensive. Original versions, black border artwork. And again, I know these were reprinted. Chronicles, they're not reserve list. Chronicle ones, I would not touch, period. The fact, the only reason is, number one, people don't want the white border. Number two, they were, the print run on Chronicles was stupid. Lastly, um, he sent me these with it just because I wanted to show them on camera. Look at the quality of some of these other card games. I don't what are these, white swords? Precious Memories? I never even heard of Precious Memories. But I thought that was kind of interesting to get some Whites cards. What is, what is this other one up here? Uh, I don't even know. They're just two, I don't even know what card game that is. 
But I wanted to point out, like, look at these. Look at this, everybody. He wanted, he sent me this when I bought his cards because he was like, Rudy, amazing how good the quality and the card stock is on these other card games. Just some random, just Chinese, Japanese, Korean card games. There's tons of, I've never heard of this. Sorry, everybody. I don't know the history of Precious Memories, but I don't know the mechanics on how to play, but the card stock is just amazing. I wanted to point that out. And again, we've done a little bit of the old uh, Weiss on this channel. And again, card stock. They're smaller cards. They're more consistent. You know, they're just, they're, I mean, look at the, look at the edging. The It's just very nice cards. Last but not least, we're not going to go through this whole thing. But I just want to show you the, the end cards here. Kind of the, most of those are just common, uncommon. See, common, uncommon, Tempest type cards. Nobody cares. But I wanted to point out this. There's, because I, people made a comment, Rudy, the last few collections in the videos lately, you haven't talked about the revised dual lands. Have they been peeking out? Are they going to go back down? Um, I am still buying the revised dual lands. Here's just, you know, another handful of the revised duels. I think they're going to cool off. I've been, I've been a little bearish lately. I've been telling everyone that. Be very, very careful with a lot of these revised duels because they've, especially like Underground Sea, some of these prices have gone up so much. I just, I don't see much more growth in the short term. I do think they're going to be $1,000 a piece one day, but I think we're looking at another, we're looking at at least a 12, 24 month cool off period. I just don't see much more growth coming from <clears throat> these type of cards in the short term. So lastly, um, I wanted to show these Force of Will specifically because I don't talk much about the Alliance Force of Will. And um, with ever since they reprinted Eternal Masters, then there's a foil version, the different art. I think original Force of Wills are still severely underprinted. It's arguably the best counterspell ever printed in Magic the Gathering, besides obviously the original. But again, it's the only, it, it's, in my opinion, it's still better than the original. It's the best counterspell there is. Especially if you're in a heavy draw deck, you can counterspells without any mana, period. So what? You pay a life, you throw a card away, you're drawing tons of cards, doesn't matter. It's very, very powerful. The Ogmont, same thing. These are very powerful cards. Lake of the Dead, they're finally catching up. Same thing with the Tomb, Helm. Again, I told you guys a second ago, Tudors, same thing. $100 card. These are cheap. They're cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. Wastelands. Was, I cannot believe. I remember a couple years ago, I was buying Wastelands. And I remember paying $50 to $100 a piece. And they completely collapsed because of the reprints in the master sets. And I don't agree with it. I don't agree. These are original artwork, original OG Wastelands. And these people, these are like 20 bucks. It's stupid how cheap those are. It's 2018. And I can buy Tempest Wastelands for 20 bucks. Are you serious right now? Lauren, Copy Artifact, man, we talked about this. Again, I talked to you guys a second ago about Visions and Weatherlight. These miscellaneous Peacekeeper type of retribution of the Meeks. And these weird little pseudo-reserve list kind of non-mainstream cards. Um, they're, just, they're starting to get a lot more attention and people are starting to pay a lot more uh, value to them. So be careful with those. I think there is more room to run. Forks, Revised Forks, again, should be $100 plus. Blood Moon Chronicles, don't touch it. I'm going to flip it. You don't want anything to do with that. Weather Light, same thing. Last and not least in this video, just to sum it up. Obviously, Shocklands, don't like them. Revised Cards, like it. Legacy, like it. Crossroads, been creeping up. Tutors, same thing. Sinkholes, love it. But again, these miscellaneous things. Um, Stone Calendar, that's the next Black Lotus. But a lot of these other things. Flying Man, hey, look, a little Flying Man card. Boop, a couple bucks. What? A couple dollars. Strip mine, then you've got, then you get out of the, you start getting all the miscellaneous cards. You start getting into a lot more just random stuff. Again, same thing with Ice Age. I know this is only worth like a dollar or something in that condition, but again, be real careful. Ice Age has a high print run, everybody. It's not as sought after and rare as you may think. And then the rest is all common, uncommon bulk. So I wanted to share this to sum up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You got to see some cool cards today. I wanted to kind of, and of course, comment on different card stock. I wanted to just reflect and kind of restate where I stand about all these reserve list cards. I continue to buy collections. Yes, the prices are higher. Yes, the buy list is way higher than it was a month ago, six months ago, and a year ago. But at the end of the day, if you're buying the right things and you're kind of getting into good price, you really you're, you have a very low amount of risk. It's very manageable compared to the potential upside over the next three, five, and ten years. But again, on these other kind of weird things when you get to some of these newer cards when it comes like glimmer voids and fetches and things like that i don't like them at all i don't like them that's why i said by the time you guys even watch this video i'm filming this video i think this is uh the beginning of august sometime in the beginning of august just by the time you guys see this video it might could be september i don't know but again I, these deals are probably done in july just be careful on trying to put money or flip or invest in newer stuff i know there's money into it i know there's people out there 
that are really big in investing and flipping and MTG finance people for non-reserve lists. I know a lot of people do with Modern and Standard. I know like even you know other YouTube channels and they talk about it. MTG Lion, Rogue Deck Builder, a lot of these channels. And they're fun to watch. It's fun to do. And some of you guys are really successful at it. It's just not for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day. You only live once. And remember, if you're not having fun and you're not feeling alive, what's the purpose? You gotta have fun, everybody. You gotta have fun. Come on. You gotta have fun.